You remember time capsules? That was like a regular thing people we like. We did one in second grade. Same. Same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, all, like, we had to walk in a line and drop our stuff in a hole. Yeah. And everybody, I, I don't really, I don't really remember what I put in there. Yeah, I, my my second grade teacher seemed to have dropped a gun in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst hour of the week with Brian Vokey and Ramsey Badawi. I guess they wanted to uh, <laughs> leave that gun for future generations to find. <laughs> I never really thought about that, but people are probably <laughs> there's probably in every time capsule there's probably one murder weapon. <laughs> right, I probably dropped a Hulkamania headband. Sure. In it. You were like, this is going to be something that yeah, yeah. is really important for societies in the future. Right, understand. or a George H.W. Bush re-election pin, like a 92 George H.W. Yeah, just a thing for people to remember. Good, uh, thank you for tapping the right George. Of course. The George who will, you know, is currently... Uh, uh, these know. these Bushes aren't aren't here for... No, well, if, for those of you just listening, we have... Um, what do you call these action figures? I would call them, yeah, I would call them action figures. Well, I'll tell you what, if they were Democrats, they'd be inaction figures. <laughs> do nothing figures. They'd be they'd be yeah, exactly. They'd be figureheads. That's what they'd yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, figures of say. Uh we've got uh 12 12 inch long uh <laughs> I know cuz I I measured them next to my cock. Yeah. Um uh, action figures of the Bush uh father son duo. You put them next to your uh your your penis and you and you realized, "Whoa, if my penis was 7 times bigger, it would be as big as this." <laughs> What's up, folks? <laughs> 7 times bigger. Is that still decent? I mean, you know. What are we working with? Brian, what inch and a half? <laughs> Tyler, <dude. laughs> Tyler did that math. Tyler Quick, came dude. in coming in hot. <laughs> Ty yeah, Tyler can't do math, but he can do dick math. Yeah, it's like yeah. <laughs> anything on the planet, we have to put it in. Like I'm like Tyler. Well, uh, Tyler's like doing his. He's figuring out his salary, and I'm mm -hmm. like, imagine if you were being paid in two inches of dick per hour. Tyler's like forty two thousand dollars a year. Why? What's going on? <laughs> That's a good salary. Dude, I was laughing the other day uh, about Tyler. I was like, dude, if Tyler was Mr. Potato Head, he would show up as just a potato <laughs> all the time. He would like, he would leave your nose, your mouth, your ears, your eyes, your legs, your arms. <laughs> he would just show up a plain potato. <laughs> Today is Tyler's farewell show. Oh man, dude, we'll we'll, we'll you, should we talk? We'll talk about that at the very end. We'll send him off in a Viking funeral. What do you yeah, think? Absolutely. We'll burn down, down the L.A. River. <laughs> down the L.A. River. We'll just fucking we'll burn everything he has. We'll burn. Uh, I mean, it's pretty easy to do a Viking funeral considering the entire state's on fire. Yeah. 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 And and considering the fact that Tyler's got all of his belongings in his car with him. So that's true. We told Tyler we were like, Tyler, bring everything <laughs> you have with you. <laughs> He's like a George Strait song. He's like, all I've got is this beat up leather bag. <laughs> Did you start to? Have you started getting uh, Have you started getting texts from people uh, about you know Hey, this is Tommy from MoveOn.org. Oh, Yo, a ton. I say stop to all of them. Yeah, I uh, you know yes, I got one yesterday, and I uh, I started like responding back to it, and I was like uh, like eh, who is this? Like I started be I started being like a real like yeah. a, a real punk like like I I used to do that, but I got it became so hack on Instagram to screenshot your sassy sarcastic remarks yeah. to a automated. You know, campaign thing. Well, you know, it's not even automated. Sometimes, a lot of times, there are people. No, working. Bernie always had real guys <laughs> yeah. working there. Bernie was paying them twenty three dollars an hour. That's why yeah. it failed. <laughs> yeah, if you if you were texting on Bernie, you got a full ride to like NYU. I got a call. I got a text from somebody, and it was a person. And I it was, was Bernie himself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he has to use one of those like apps where they magnify the the, the phone. <laughs> He uh, no, I was getting a text from a, a guy laptop. or a gal or I, I forget who it was who was sending me a text, but I was uh, responding and I was being like a little sass queen where mm -hmm. I was like, oh, like who is this and what do you do? Blah blah. And eventually, the person just responded back to me and they were like, we're sorry about all that. We'll take you off our list immediately. And I uh, I I kind of waited a few minutes and I actually sent the person a text as an apology. I was like, I'm sure you did. I said sorry about that, man. <laughs> I'm sure your job is hard enough. I'm sure you had to take a walk. I did because you know what? What am I doing? <laughs> this person is being paid fourteen dollars a fourteen dollars a year, and I'm I'm attacking him via text. Dude, my friend is working for the census up in Portland, Oregon. But I just need to be clear: you're not. When I respond back to that guy, you know, when I go like, "Who is this?" Kamala Harris isn't getting my text back. No, she's not. <laughs> she's not reading it. I'm just yelling at a kid. <laughs> She's getting fitted for her uh, Hillary Clinton Kim Jong Un suit. Yeah, right what? Now. What do you do? 
I felt so bad. I was like, you know what, Ramsey? You're not going to be this guy anymore. You're going to leave but these did people alone. you think alone. for one second that maybe the guy like was happy with a, you know, or the girl some funny interactions? You know what? I imagine it's nothing but sass all day long from everybody. I imagine somebody's got to be good at it, though. Somebody's got to make you laugh. Every once in a while, but uh, it's a, probably a hard. It's, the bar is raising. You know what I mean in terms of what's good and what's funny. And probably person was not. You know, either way, I I I just I felt bad. I'm like, what yeah. are you doing, man? What are you doing? I thought it was Kamala Harris texting me, and so I sent a dick pic, and um, uh, now I'm under investigation. Yeah, that's uh, that would be a problem with uh, you, t- boy. Uh, look, man, uh, Kamala's. Uh, our boy She's Rush, not the one to mess our with. boy Rush is going pretty wild on Kamala. Is he? I haven't been listening. Oh, Rushbo. So I'm, a, I'm sure he is because he already has 30 years of going in on Biden, so he's got fresh meat now. Tyler, you hear about this at all? No. Apparently, and and you know I don't know much about it, but uh, Kamala Harris dated Willie Brown. Oh, Slick I know Willie all about in the that. Twi- yeah, yeah. So uh, he's basically Rush Limbaugh has gone on a full on assault on Kamala, saying that she slept her way to the top. To the top. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> Do you know about Willie Brown? So uh, for those listening at home and for Tyler, Willie Brown was the mayor of San Francisco. He kind of kicked off the first gentrification uh, round in San Francisco, the dot-com boom. Yeah, he basically had a shovel, and he just put it into somebody's back. Yeah, <laughs> instead of, bra- instead of yeah. breaking ground, he just had a family <laughs> underneath him. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> An entire family was in was in their house, and Willie, <laughs> Willie Brown, rather than using a shovel, just had a battering ram into their front door. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so he, yeah, he oversaw the destruction of San Francisco from, you know, the hippie paradise it used to be. Which, by the way, I'm start, as I get older, I'm starting to think that the old San Francisco sucked too. I you imagine know, when a lot probably- of people are like, "Man, San Francisco used to be cool," and now I think about what they mean. Yeah, and I'm like. I don't want to be around that fucking weird shit anymore. You don't get it, man. San Francisco used to be awesome. You used to be able to get heroin at any public bathroom. Which still can. That st- hasn't changed. That's probably right. But it was like Burning Man every day, man. There was live performance on the streets Dude. everywhere. There was like noise musicians just, uh, it's just all over the BART stations. Yeah. I, I, violent crime at all everywhere. I mean. You, would, you could turn a corner and the Grateful Dead would just be doing a live show. Yeah. Could you imagine how annoying that would be? <laughs> If you just turn the corner to work. and just look, Grateful Dead is there. Because the problem with it is, is, is you. It's not like okay, well, after this song, things will go on. This is gonna be a thirty-two minute song. <laughs> yeah, that's just the song. That's just the song. Not a concert. Not the a concert. Concert's five hours long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody was on acid. They, you know, you know, public nudity. It was one of the only cities that had public nudity that was legal. By the way, the people who like to be nude in public are not people yeah. you want to see nude. Sure, it's sure. always just disgusting, fucking. It's like me. I like where you go with this, Brian, and I'm with you. Big tech, worst hour of the week. We, <laughs> we, sal- we should have a worst hour of the week salute. <laughs> this week, worst hour of the week salutes. Big, Big tech. tech. I didn't expect that. I don't know what kind of what. La- I don't know. <laughs> In the 1950s, people laughed a different way. Like, they had a different kind of, like, you know. That, I haven't heard a laughter like that on TV since Kramer accidentally caught his hair on fire. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that, that, that is the loudest laugh. Nobody's laughed that hard since. Dude, that literally <laughs> turned, like, uh, uh, that was, it was like Kramer uh, catching his hair on fire, and then the next time white people laughed that hard was Borat in the theaters. Like, that w- it was like, those were the moments I that really that. got I them. missed Borat. You know, I didn't see Borat until, like, four years ago. Really? Still loved it. You just weren't. You were, You yeah. thought it was real. <laughs> <laughs> I, have you seen this uh, Al Jazeera doc on <laughs> on this Kazakh? Kazakh. The because the the premise of Borat could be like today if I described it to you and it's bare bones, you'd be like, "What is that? Like a Vice documentary?" If I was like, "It's yeah, about yeah, this yeah. ambassador from Kazakhstan and his trip to America and what yeah, he yeah. what he learned about what America and he actually runs into is. a lot of racism." Yeah, and he runs into yeah, racism. It sounds like Vice for sure. You'd be like, "Oh, what's that? Is that produced by David Cho or what's 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 the deal with that one?" <laughs> Dude, I knew Lunell right away though when I saw it, and everybody else knows Lunell from Borat, but I know Lunell from comedy. Uh-huh. Lunell, the original bad girl of comedy. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, shit, Lunell is in this. And other people are just like, because Lunell is like black famous. She's sure. not famous in a mainstream at all. Uh-huh. I think the only thing people know her from is Borat. But you all got to check out her stand up. It's unbelievable. I feel like I saw her on a lot of things on UPN. Uh, maybe was she in The Hangover as well, or is that somebody else? That's a different person? All right. Tyler, cut that out. Uh, <laughs> 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 that's not... <laughs> If that's somebody else, then we are. Uh, 
You know what I? Back to saluting big tech. Here's what I. Uh, here's what I, I. I will have to say is uh, there's a lot of people who give. You know, big tech. They're talking about how scary it is. You know, there's sure. But in some ways, aren't they just giving us what we want? You know, what do we want? We want to be seen. When do we want it? We want to be seen now. <laughs> and what have these guys done? They put a camera in every single door. They put a camera on every single fucking light pole. Yeah. You know, th- I was reading the other day. Did you ever see those things uh, like uh, on YouTube where it's like people? I love watching people freak out about big tech where they're like, you don't even understand. Uh, mm-hmm. They'll go, the next Amazon is working on some technology right now that will deliver you something you want before you even knew you wanted it. And I'm that like, sounds great. That is one of the best things I've ever heard. <laughs> the one thing, I, my biggest obstacle in life is I don't know what I want. Could you imagine? So if there's an algorithm that can figure out what I want. That's what I'm saying. Please, the, by all means, the, help me figure this shit out. The amount of emotional turmoil this will relieve probably in my life, where I'll just show up one day and be like, you know what? I, it turns out I just needed a blender. <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> pretty The one pissed. that can make chickpea flour. Yeah, I was pretty pissed. I thought I was pissed off at my dad. It turns out. <laughs> I needed a sunbeam. Yeah, it turns out I just needed a new <laughs> USB mouse. So Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if anybody, if I don't care if you're big tech or not, if you know what I want and you want to send it to me. And you're willing to give it to me? God, I, absolutely. I don't see the problem. Well, that's like being pissed off that your spouse made you a sandwich when you came home. Like, well, that's great. Yeah, anticipating your needs is one of the number one, like, uh, characteristics of a loving relationship. So so if Amazon's anticipating my needs, I mean, that's that's like, love. Turns out big tech loves us after all. I don't know what these people are complaining about. You know, I'm a little upset because I feel like I'm shadow banned. Now, yes, I do only have four followers. Yeah. But I feel like all four aren't seeing what I'm doing. The shadow ban is nice. It's a nice excuse to give yourself. Anytime I get a tweet. When you bomb. When I tweet bombs, I'm like, well, I guess the government's after me. Yes. It's just too edgy. (laughs) It's too edgy. Yeah. My master chef. My master chef pun. It was, <laughs> it was a little upsetting, ultimately, though, that you, if you were born like myself and indoctrinated into some kind of a religion that scared the hell out of you, right? And then you broke the chain. Some kind of religion. Choose your, we'll leave it open. CYR, bro. <laughs> CYR. Choose your religion that scared the hell out of you, right? You know, because I was like, I, you know, when I was 17, I, I remember coming across this profound realization that, hey, it turns out there is no God watching me at all times and there is nothing keeping record of me at all times and there is no, you know, mm-hmm. nobody will judge me. And it turns out, no, that, 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 you know, by the time I was 30. There it is. It's back. Yeah. The eye of the, the eye in the sky. It's back and real. How do you think like crazy paranoid people feel about that where they're like they're all you know they're putting chips in us and they're all watching us and you're like yeah 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 no, yeah it are. seems about <laughs> does it calm them down i don't know i i feel also, validated on one level i'm freaked out by it but on the other level i'm like google knows so much about me and what are they doing trying to sell me a toothbrush H- how bad can these guys really be <laughs> yeah, i know <laughs> My dad's trying to sell me his wife's car right now. And I mean, he's gouging me way more than Amazon ever would. He's gouging you. Could you imagine if I knew about you what Google knew about you? <laughs> we'll say the Patreon split would be a lot different. Yeah, yeah. Let's just say, uh, like, why is Brian only getting three dollars off the Patreon? <laughs> his number one Google search is how to raise credit score. Number two, Japanese breast milk. <laughs> <laughs> they're cor- they're correlated. You can. <laughs> Brian is actually trying to get into a business right now. He's like, I think there's a way to make this happen. Dude, speaking of salesmanship, my dad was telling me a story and he was crying, laughing. He used to be a used car salesman, uh-huh. and he said his mom. This is back in the seventies when he was a young man, and he and he said his mom needed. Now, a- when you cry from laughter, this is not a concept that I understand as an Arab mm-hmm. person. You've never cried or laughed. Oh uh, well, no. One time I laughed and then I started crying for <laughs> immediate <laughs> so, guilt because yeah, your soul was dead. Yeah, um, but so the, he told the the lot uh, lord, the lot lizard, the man who runs the uh, used car dealership. Yeah. Isn't he, a lot lizard a, a a truck stop whore? Truck, uh, not on this podcast, buddy. A truck stop. <laughs> can't li- say whore anymore. He can't say whore anymore. <laughs> I one time, I one time said, I one time on stage said whorehouse, and then the crowd actually reacted negatively to me, and I realized like, oh, that's like a term of the old. That's like an old. That's an old timey. You're now supposed to call it a whore home. <laughs> Come on, folks. <laughs> folks. They, uh, so they, okay. <laughs> My, I'm La- sorry. I Lady- was way too late on that. I apologize. Ladies and germs, this is the worst <laughs> hour of the week. I uh my my dad's selling used cars on the lot and uh the guy comes down he goes hey my mother's coming down here to look for a car he goes your mother's coming down he goes you can hit her over the head 
Yeah. His eyes lit up. He lost his mind because he was like, if there's one person you can really, <laughs> really sell a lemon to for like way too much, it's your mother. Oh, Lord. Is that not the most used car dealership? Dude, that is so funny. <laughs> he said, as soon as I said my mom's coming down, the guy's eyes took out his big as watermelons. Listen, man, you got to get in. You got to figure out where you can make your bucks, and you got to make those bucks. <laughs> you, you can know what I mean? hit her over the head. I'm in the stock market right now. I'm throwing it in pretty good. Um, I'm taking a little bit of a bath today, to be completely honest with you. Um, yeah. I, I threw in all my money into Live Nation and into Southwest. Um, and yeah, because everybody's going to live events and traveling right now. Well, that's what I thought. <laughs> I threw all my money into Live Nation, Southwest, Handshakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you invested heavy in Handshakes. Dude, Handshakes is down f- 400% now. <laughs> there was a while where I thought I could make money off of every Handshake. When, when, we were, when I was a kid, we had to do a stock. You ever do that? You buy fake buy stocks when you were a kid in economics class? I didn't know what a stock was until I was almost 27. I'm not kidding. Like Nobody ever taught me what a stock was. I can't believe you went to a school where they taught you what a stock was. In Georgia. Yeah, yeah. We had to buy stocks, fake stocks, and and, you know, evaluate the market. I bought all all stock in upper deck baseball cards. Yeah. Like the baseball card company, because I just thought, I was like, I love this. So I imagine, I mean, if anybody else feels the way I do about them, they're probably flying off the shelves yeah yeah and didn't really work out that well I, well i got them cheap it was like you know it's like 12 dollars a share and uh-huh. i think they ended at about 11 dollars a share oh dude i don't think i lost too much this is my new favorite thing to say oh dude you really took a bath there man I, that's <laughs> oh man i've been watching a lot well, it's a bull market a lot of jim kramer lately a lot of sleeves rolled up yeah 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 you know what the stock market in Saudi Arabia is? It's just a market that sells stocks for people so they can publicly <laughs> flog you. I think a stock is the name of the thing that you it put is. your head into. Yeah, It's 100% a stock. So these are the kinds of jokes that get us shadow banned from Twitter. It's mm-hmm. having these, uh, these, these crazy puns, these crazy edgy political <laughs> puns. Speaking of politics... We've got a great show for you folks. We do. I wanted I wanted to spend a little bit of time on Unlike last week's show. I know. Dude. <laughs> I gotta be real with you. We took a bath last week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners took a bath last week, dude. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> uh uh one of my favorite figures in American movie making. Um is Steve Bannon. He, he's made all my favorite movies. Yeah. Have you seen the... I pushed that movie on you. It was a Hulu docu-series. It, it was like that Steve Bannon produced. It the Hillary like, Clinton one? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he... That does make her look more favorable to <laughs> Steve Bannon and his and his people. But there is a documentary that he produced with him and his boys where it was like showing like the way that they kind of operate and, and the things that they're up against. I think it's called like... Oh, you know, Ground Zero? Some, something like that. Did you ever I've, see it? I've seen I Well, the one I was watching last night was one called um, Torchbearer, which uh-huh. is about the um, issues uh, of living in a secular society, like a, how America is godless now. Yeah. And how that's ruining us and decaying our culture. And it was uh, mainly featured around the guy from Duck Dynasty, the old guy. uh the one who got kicked off of Duck Dynasty for saying he was as homophobic as Jesus was and black people are happier under Jim Crow. Uh-huh. Remember yeah. that guy? Yeah, I do you remember that long, guy. Yeah. yeah. So he made a movie where he went to Israel and Jerusalem and shit and just started screaming and quoting biblical scriptures. It's a fantastic movie. And he blended right in. <laughs> he <laughs> yeah, blended dude. right into Jerusalem. I, dude, he looked like everybody with the beard and everything. It's just the camouflage made him stand out. Yeah. Tyler, out of curiosity... <laughs> Can you Google? I just want he fit, uh, torchbearer rotten tomato score. I'm dying to know. Yeah, um, I looked it up. It's got to be. Well, yeah, it's okay. It's Another one be. he made. He made a great documentary about my favorite uh, mask singer performer, Sarah Palin, uh-huh. called Undefeated. So I had no idea Steve Bannon was involved in politics. I just big fan of his movies. You just thought he was. Uh, well, I was a big fan of his editing work on Breitbart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His journalism, his, his editorial. Oh, yeah. he wrote too. I thought he just edited. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fan of just editors. Uh, I love, torch. So it doesn't have a Rotten Tomato rating, but its IMDb score is 2.2. Wow. It's got a 2.2 on IMDb, but that's a liberal bias. E- sure, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, and IMDb, it's hard to – IMDb is funny. I, I'm certainly not the first person to make this observation, but everything is between 6 and 8. <laughs> Nothing has ever been a 10 or a, or a 1. <laughs> right, so. right, right, right. <laughs> Except Daniel Day-Lewis. If you look at any of his movies, they're 10. Sure, on IMDb. sure. Um, 
so Steve Bannon got arrested, and <clears throat> this is a bucket list for me. We talk about bucket lists for you. Yeah. Steve Bannon got arrested on a $28 million yacht owned by an exiled Chinese billionaire yeah. for fraud. A dissident, if, if you will. The guy, yeah. yeah. What was his name? It's Guo. Uh-huh. I, I don't know how to say it. It's G-U-O, uh-huh. W-N-G-U-I. It just <laughs> Guo doesn't... Wen guy. Uh, by the way, turns out, this is something you'll notice. with all. What, what, here's the reason why we're doing this. I wanted to spend a second because every time Steve Bannon gets in trouble, people try to tie it upwards to Trump because they're interested in taking Trump down. Yeah. I wanted to look down <laughs> into Steve Bannon's inner circle. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like how you know we all have comedian friends who are way more successful th- than us. Yeah. So if we got in trouble... They would say, you know, blah, 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 his friend did this of course. or whatever. But if they looked lower at my friends, yeah. they'd be like, this is a problem. Yeah, if they looked lower they <laughs> if they looked lower at your friends, they'd be like, that's amazing that this guy only did that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If they get any lower than you, Brian, <laughs> it's like they're going to find a lot worse crimes than whatever you're in trouble for. <laughs> I mean – if you think about it, like I wanted to talk about C-Band's inner circle because we've been talking about him for two minutes. We've already brought up Sarah Palin, a guy from Duck Dynasty, an exiled Chinese billionaire. This guy, Steve Bannon's funeral is going to look like a season of Celebrity Apprentice. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, <laughs> it's going to be the most, it, his circle is insane. And because he was just arrested, but also we'll get into this at the end of the segment, but I have a personal connection to, we're going to go into the crew of people he was arrested with recently for the fraud. And one of these people who I won't mention out of respect um, is is quite close in ties to me yeah. in a certain way. And um, maybe he's a co-host <laughs> of the show. Maybe he's a relative. Maybe he founded Breitbart. Maybe he didn't. We don't know who it is. I don't know who it is, but it's one of these guys we're going to talk about. This is a serious... By the way, you're serious about this. This is not a joke. Dead dead serious. We have a lot of jokes in the show. In fact, pretty much everything up until now has been a joke, but this is a serious... I have an actual close tie-ish to one of C. Vannon's best uh, inner circle folks. Okay. Um, And also, I want to say this about the exiled billionaire. Um, I want to make it clear. Is it that guy? We think that's cool. Is it that guy? No, 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 no. <laughs> Brian is related to a Chinese billionaire. <laughs> 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 oh, by the way, the Chinese billionaire, you know, he calls himself an exiled billionaire. Rumor has it he's not even living in exile. Uh huh. So the, his whole story is a lie. He's selling it. All, one thing you'll notice about Steve Bannon is none of these people have real beliefs, but they, the way they grift is by preying on people with strong ideology. Yeah, I mean, so, that's the boy, easiest way. That's what everyone is doing. The grift today is to prey on everybody with strong ideology. Exactly. And uh, so this guy, this Chinese billionaire, he he met up a story that may or may not be true about 1988. Uh, CCP, like, police officers came in, busted through the door while his wife was holding his baby and shot his wife or something. Yeah. And like, and he's like, from that moment on, I've been fighting the Chinese government since 1980. Turns out he spent... All of the last, the rest of the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s working very closely with the Chinese government in real estate because you can't make money in China doing real estate without having a close relationship with the government. Yeah, it's yeah. It's an authoritarian state. So this, that whole thing's a lie. Okay. He's, he's not even living in, He's just living in Connecticut for fun. Even if you tell me it's a lie, I don't believe you. I, <laughs> I love his story so much. And also, worst hour nation, we don't extradite. I want to make it clear. No extradition. <laughs> we will never extradite. What a great Patreon perk. <laughs> yeah. If you join our Patreon, by the way, www.patreon.com backslash WHOTW, you will be joining a nation that will, I mean, Snowden is a member. Snowden is in. Assange. Um, who else do we have? Uh, uh, Gua Wengi. Yeah. Uh, the guys who killed Jamal Koshesh. Koshesh- Kishagi. 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 I, he's an Arab, and I don't know how to say his name. Yeah, yeah. We got those guys. Yeah, we got them. Um, you know. Kate, oh, the Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama's in. He's there. Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn. <laughs> um. Oh, Randy. Randy Quaid. Is that the actor who went on the run from yeah. National Lampoon or whatever? All Christmas these, vacation. Yeah, he's a member. All these people <laughs> are worst hour Patreon subscribers, and the reason why they joined is for protection. Man, you gotta protect your future. We're an offshore podcast. We are offshore. <laughs> We are technically, if you try to mail us something, you'll notice that you have to send it to the Island of Man, and that's fine. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we went there just for the name. <laughs> yeah, we, we were like, dude, we love Man. Yeah, this sounds like the least whiny island I've ever been to. The national anthem for the <laughs> Island of Man is just <laughs> Tim Taylor's grunt. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, I was going to say, it's back in black. Yeah. <laughs> Bam. Bam. Yeah. Bam. 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 
Uh, yeah, so I just want to make it clear. Join the Patreon, $5 a month. Not only do you get four extra episodes a month, but you also get uh, residency to a country that will not uh, extradite yeah. as a promise. And that's a promise. That's a, an absolute promise. <laughs> we will never extradite. So uh, Bannon was arrested, and, and you know what the fraud was? It was the We Build the Wall yeah. campaign. So Steve Bannon, uh, Brian Colfage. Or Cole Fage. I don't know if the G. It, I would assume it's Cole Fage. Yeah, yeah. Because he's think a so. con artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's got him. You gotta juice up your name. You if got you're a fucking con artist. Yeah, I'm Badoui. Yeah, it's like it's Colbert. Yeah, it's like yeah. like the whole bit with Stephen Colbert saying that was just to be more pretentious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm imagining all his relatives are Cole Fage. Yeah, my last name will be pronounced Badoui if I ever get into scamming, and my first name will be pronounced Pierre. <laughs> Pierre Badoui. <laughs> Is that not the most pretentious, like, scam artist name you've ever... Pierre Badoui. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I trust that guy. Yeah, so I'm currently trying to raise money to... I'm actually... The Worst Tower Nation is trying to raise money to take down the wall, but we are going to embezzle all of it. The wall? <laughs> we're doing the opposite. Oh, yeah, okay. we're doing the exact opposite. We're telling people, give us money, and we're going to take the wall down. And then you're going to scrap it. And then, Well, here's the thing. The wall just won't ever be built. We keep the money. We buy a yacht. Yeah. We flee to China. Nobody, and we're American dissidents. Nobody figures it out. Nobody's we, hurt. Brian, we are wasting our time trying to make it an American show business. I'm telling you, we take the money, we go to China, we become huge stars in China, playing bad guy Americans in movies. Right. It's over, dude. Do you think you could play a bad guy? Do you think I could play a bad guy? Of course I could play a bad guy. I'm kidding. That's all you could play. Okay, well, that's hurtful. <laughs> I can't imagine you being, uh, I mean, not you're not like Steve Bannon level, but like, I, I, you know, like Steve Bannon could never be anything but a villain. You see this fucking guy back while, he's just like completely backtracking on it. Oh, uh, I don't mean to hurt your feelings. <laughs> Steve, oh, I don't know if I could be a bad guy. <laughs> I, could per- I could play a best friend. I could play a cousin. You think so? <laughs> I'm just naming other family members. <laughs> I could play. That doesn't mean you're a good or a bad guy, though. I just because you're a cousin, you can still be a bad guy. Brother-in-law. Sister's friend. <laughs> I could play all these fucking roles, dude. Yeah, but do you think you could walk in and be like a Chandler? I think I could be a Chandler. You, you mean do. off screen or on screen? On screen. Uh, I mean, I could be Matthew Perry, is what I, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> you could just gobble pills. Just take pills. I mean, those those guys, Fraser Crane and Matthew Perry, I forget Fraser Crane's real name. Yeah. Those guys are masters because everybody tells stories about them. They're like, yeah, he was naked, vomiting, and pouring sweat, and his eyes were rolled back in his head. The director would say, action, he would be in a costume, and he'd be nailing all his lines. And then they would hit. Fraser? Yeah. Oh, big time. He wrote. <laughs> and then they, yeah, Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey yeah, Grammer, yeah. dude. And then they would write cut, and then he would just be dead in a corner again. We'll, <laughs> we'll open up the second half of the show. We got to watch. How much do you guys love the video of, of Kelsey oh, Grammer? Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> falling <laughs> through on stage. It's, you ever seen him fall off stage? He's doing stand-up. He falls off stage, uh, and as he falls, he goes, oh, dear Lord. Uh, Tyler, you're in for a treat, my friend. You are in for a fucking treat. Trip through It's a Small World, pretending I was a UN interpreter. Oh, dear Lord. So let's get into Bannon's inner circle. The first guy, the guy who started the We Build the, the Wall campaign, is a triple amputee named mm-hmm. Brian Colfage. Yeah. And uh, he got blowed up by an RPG in Iraq. Oh, okay. So you're saying that he was not a triple amputee by choice. This was a, a decision. This was uh, an accident. Right. Talk about a triple A. I don't want to join. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I would love to be a triple A. I would love to be a triple amputee by choice. How cool would that be? <laughs> Elon Musk is eventually going to be you're like just that a, lazy that you don't want to do any work. So I, you're like, just leave me with my left hand. In three years, he's, <laughs> I'm I can still you, beat up. In three years, Elon Musk will be a double amputee by choice. He'll have robotic arms. Oh, absolutely. He'll have actual. He'll like, have T Rex legs. Yeah, he'll have T. He'll have T Rex's <laughs> legs, and he'll have Doctor Octopus's fucking backpack from Spider Man, and he'll just be. <laughs> Just be choking out people during Tesla shareholder meetings. Still with zero charisma, though. Zero. Still just like saying eight word sentences at the longest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with giant T Rex legs, dude. Uh, Brian uh, Colfage, uh, triple APT in Iraq. Um, he he made his money by starting fake news uh, sites on uh, pages on Facebook 
where he would like Photoshop Hillary Clinton getting arrested and they'd be like, the DOJ finally did it. Yeah. You know, he'd get 14 million clicks and he gets like $2 for every thousand clicks. Well, you know, he didn't actually, what's funny is, you know, he didn't actually do the Photoshop. No, he did. Did he? No, there's a text exchange oh, between hello. a former employee who was super hot. Side note. Um, she, she was calling him out. Noted. Side noted. <laughs> she, she was, okay, hold on. Super hot. <laughs> um, she was calling him out because he he sent her a Photoshop that he did where he just pasted Hillary's head on a body getting arrested. Yeah. And uh, she's like, so you just want me to lie in Photoshop? And he goes, yup. Oh. <laughs> Wait, she asked, but he asked her to do the Photoshop. No, he made it, sent an example, said, I did this article. Your articles are getting one million. Mine are getting 14 million. Yeah. Like Photoshop like I do. Yeah, um, he, so this is similar a similar scam to like when you see online where you see uh, like it's like check out this product that all the shark tanks that all the sharks endorse. Mm -hmm. I fucking click every time. They never endorse those products. I saw the episode. <laughs> That's how much I watch Shark Tank is when I see those fake articles I go, they didn't give that guy a deal. I know exactly what but deal that is. But you still clicked on it. They still made their AdSense. They still made their AdSense. So this guy uh he also he started a fake veterans charity. Uh-huh. For, for uh, a charity for fake vet veterans? No, a oh. fake charity for real veterans where he was going to counsel wounded veterans. Uh huh. And this guy had all the great, all the favor of the world, pictures with every president, you know, because he was a triple amputee who fought in the war. And so he was, he was funneling all the money. Yeah. Uh, for, so he's got a whole part of me thinks the reason why he started all this scamming is that he's Republicans are the ones who sent him to Iraq. Yeah. You know, so I'm wondering if he like, you know, the whole time he was like learning to walk with his new like ski legs and his like weird fake arm the whole time. He was just like, I'm going to I am going to bilk this base who did this to me for every last nickel. He wouldn't be wrong to do it. He's very I, I think there's something very cynical and ab about this guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> kidding. That was but his wife. Uh -huh. Super hot. Chili's waitress. And get this. He met her at a Chili's. He married her. Guess what she does now? Um, works for, at a Applebee's or she is a model for none other than bang energy drinks. What the heck? You're going to see energy drinks are going to come up a lot in, in this. I didn't uh, even, I didn't even know they had bang energy drink models. Hey, I'm, who seems needs like you would have a full size cardboard cutout of one. I'm just saying <laughs> I go energy drinks. Who needs to see a woman? Like we give me, <laughs> sell me the drink. I don't got to see. You don't got to sell me an energy drink. Seems like you would have one of those, like a cardboard cutout of a Bang Energy model, so you could use the HOV lane. You would just yeah. use the, put the seatbelt over the cutout. I just don't get it. I'm Smear my babe, going for a drive. Who who sees energy drinks and is like, I'm halfway in on this one. You're either fully in, you're fully out. You use sex for things that don't work. One thing I, I it revealed a lot. You got your rock star here. Uh, energy drinks are going to come up a lot, and later on, not now. I want you to describe or explain to me. Why conservatives and energy drinks go together so well, but don't do it right yet. Uh huh. Um, because that guy, so he started the We Build the Wall charity. All these guys are S Sasha Baron Cohen characters who aren't funny. Mm -hmm. Like they're all just scamming conservatives for money, but there's no joke. Yeah. Um, but he started the We Build the Wall campaign, which was going to be a publicly funded uh, wall on the private property parts of the border so there's parts of the border that are private property right up to mexico yeah and on those parts a lot of those people support the wall so they're building the wall there privately uh-huh and they said that they wouldn't take a nickel they took millions well and if they're being fair they were being honest in that moment they did take they were saying we no 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 we're not going to take a nickel we're going to take no. way more than no, a nickel. we're taking a million dollars yeah we're taking a million dollars like nobody's taking a nickel from this and uh yeah so he and a lot of people were like you know i'm going to build a wall but i'm only taking a nickel fox that would be crazier Fox News, com <laughs> the comments on the Fox News uh, article about this story when they showed the picture of his hot wife, they were like, well, that's why he's doing it. Like, I'm sure she's like a fucking, you know, she's some like, what do you call them? Like a, a gold digger or whatever. And he uh -huh. was just trying to keep up with her. Like, they immediately just went to, like, it's just. They seriously tried to. Yes, I swear to God. They are just so consistent. Yeah. They see a hot girl and they, they're all just these angry dudes in basements who are just like well it's that bitch's fault they see a woman and then they're like they see a veteran and they're like we can't blame the veteran mm -hmm. and we can blame the woman so what do we do to make this work exactly i'm in the writer's room over there that's what i'm saying that's, <laughs> I, I know how this works the next guy arrested was a man named timothy shea uh, another conservative scam artist you know what timothy shea is into what's he doing he runs 
an energy drink company. <laughs> yeah. His energy drink company is a Trump themed energy drink called Winning Energy. Okay. And it comes with 12 invigorating ounces of liberal tears. Yeah. And it has airbrushed art of a wicked buff Donald Trump in a Captain Marvel. No, that's a woman, isn't it? Uh, Captain America. Yeah. Captain Marvel would be hilarious. But a Captain America outfit, and he's like got a bald eagle behind him, and he's like stomping out Hillary or and, something. And he's holding a Barack Obama while Barack Obama's wearing a turban or something. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's giving him he's a like nugget. He's scored a touchdown on the Alabama field yeah. or something. Yeah. Dude, I would love to try this energy drink. I mean, not not that I support any of the cause, but I mean, you know. I ordered some. Did you order some? I ordered some. Oh, my God. I ordered a six-pack of winning energy drink. Uh, we're going to we're. By the way, you also can still donate to the wall if you're in, in the We Build a Wall campaign if you're interested. Even if, after the, the arrest? You come, donations are more than ever. They are really soliciting donations I bet because you they've been under attack by the uh, liberal media. They're on fire probably right now. I guarantee yeah. they're oh, getting the, yes. they're getting more. This is great PR for them. Oh, this is amazing. Never waste a scandal, right? Isn't that what they say? You know, I used to think, you know, if one if 2020 has, uh, has you know, solidified anything, is remember when people used to say, like, there's no such thing as bad press? Yeah. I think 2020 has proven there's plenty such thing as bad press. I'm starting still. to think there's no such thing as good press. There's, this, there may no such thing. As, yeah, it's all. <laughs> it's like to me, quiet day is a good day. That's it. If you're trending on, nobody trends on Twitter because you know every now and then there's like an amazing clapback. Yeah. Or something. But yeah. other than that, if you're trending on Twitter, it's bad news. It's bad news, or you're a rat that's dragging pizza or something in a place that it shouldn't be. Sure, but sure, sure. Even that is still pretty bad news if you really think about it. <laughs> if the rats are big enough to carry pizza, that's a problem for your yeah, city. Yeah, yeah, full pizzas in the box. Yeah. <laughs> on one paw. One paw. <laughs> that thing is going to supersize its entire family and take over New York. Well, it's there for the taking. Um, the other, the last man arrested in the Bannon, there was Bannon, Colfage, Timothy Shea. Last guy arrested, Andrew Badalato, who is a hilarious worst hour character. Uh huh. He is an old friend of Steve Bannon's. This guy is the biggest scumbag in the world. This is his first arrest, though. And that's he's really hanging his hat on this. That, his record. You'll see his record is horrific, but he's never been convicted yeah. of anything. The Golden State Killer should have used the same argument. Yeah. Look, I've never been charged with anything in my life. What? Okay, okay, okay. I killed 14 people. But hold on. If you'll see my record before, pretty clean. So <laughs> maybe we could, you know. So Andrew Badalato is a self-described ventured capitalist. Venture capitalist. Yeah. And at one point, Bannon was claiming his residency. As his home, because Bannon was registered to vote in two states, mm -hmm. and he was living uh, in New York at an apartment in Manhattan uh, across from Trump Tower, and he was living in Florida, and he was claiming Badalado's residency. And this guy is just such – he's filed Chapter 7 and Chapter 13 bankruptcy twice each. Both chapters four, – He's fourth. It's four bankruptcies, both, both uh, twice. I've never gotten to Chapter 7 in any book I've ever read in my entire <laughs> life. I need to <laughs> – I don't, so know, I don't what know what the difference, difference is. Yeah. Chapter 7 and Chapter 13 is, but I feel like not very many people file four times. Yeah, it seems like, to me, Chapter 13 seems like bad luck. They should have done Chapter 12 or Chapter 14. <laughs> this guy has no balls, by the way. He, f he bails out with bankruptcy. He's worn a wire twice. He's gotten underwater twice. Oh, so he's okay. He is redeemable. Yeah, he 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 borrowed 12.5 large yeah. from a mafioso yeah. tied, uh, named Luis Caputo, <laughs> who's related to the Colombo crime family. He he borrowed twelve thousand five hundred dollars at five hundred percent interest. Oh boy, that is <laughs> tough rate. I mean, honestly, tough rate to, to, pay to be completely straight up with you, Bank of America's rate is barely better. <laughs> I mean, you, it's barely. So when that guy was threatened to break his kneecaps when he couldn't pay, so he wore a wire and put that guy away. Yeah. He's I'm wearing a wire right now, just so you know. <laughs> you, I mean, been, you literally are. I've been wearing a wire. I wear a wire all the time, just so like when I show up to the bargaining table for whatever it is. <laughs> you wore a wire because you wore it once, and you've been scared to rip off the tape because yeah. you thought it would hurt. <laughs> so you've just left the wire on. You know how some people who uh, are, you know, they'll 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 go like, oh, underneath my clothing, I wear something else because it's who, who I really am. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing with wearing a wire. I go, I just felt comfortable and alive for the first time. <laughs> it's just, it's just nice. It's nice. I feel secure. This guy records everything. He's gonna be killed. Uh -huh. He's he, like, it's open knowledge that he's been recording all his conversations with all his business partners. Yeah. 
all that stuff. He's worn a wire twice. He started a fake biotech company that um, was scamming stock. Like it was, he was buying a bunch of stock himself to make it look like it was rising. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what I should do. The, it was a complete shell company, not real. It, it got caught. They got, uh, the FBI caught on or the Secret Service or somebody caught on to it. And so he wore a wire, busted all the people he went into the business with. Yeah. <laughs> He's a complete dirtbag. Do you think Shell, the company, the gas company, had a, had a tough time explaining? Like it was like <laughs> a real who's on first when they were explaining it's their a corporation. Sh- uh, shell company? It's a Shell. It's Shell. I'm asking. Oh, so it's a Shell company of what? No, no, no. It's Shell. So is it a real company? It's a real company. So what is it called? Shell. So how is it a real company? Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> who's on? Brian and I are going to do... <laughs> Brian and I, we should get a corporate gig. Brian and I are gonna do who? We're gonna do next. <laughs> Brian and I are gonna start doing uh, fucking comedy out on Wall Street, Nasdaq. <laughs> you know, I've literally dropped a banner calling out the CEO of Shell in 2005 or six for environmental practices. For those of you who can't see, <laughs> I didn't know what that would be. I, I, I. <laughs> How does this work? Does this just have random sounds in it? I don't know what happened, but they've all changed. Let's go through them real okay. quick. Okay. All right. Oh, that we should have been using that a hundred times. We should have totally today. used that one here. Yeah. Cash register. <laughs> Sitcom laughter. <laughs> Air horn. <laughs> Applause. Applause. <laughs> trombone. Sad trombone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not to be confused with the rest of the trombone. And then okay, and the rim shot. All right. So, <laughs> Bottolato, um, he he's run a ton of businesses with Bannon. And they're all in different states. Like he ran a nasal spray company out of Colorado. He ran a cosmetic company out of Delaware. Yeah. With him, he ran some company with Bannon out of like Pennsylvania or something called E3. Nobody knows what they did. Yeah, that's <laughs> they've all collapsed. Uh huh. Um, I think in order for something to collapse, it needs to have been built in the first place, to be fair. Sure. He's been accused of rape three different times. Uh, Obvious. All these guys. By the way, I forgot to mention that. Every guy I'm talking about, uh, rape accusation. Even Bannon? Uh, Okay. Let's just assume. Look at him. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you know. know, Nobody has that hairstyle. It's a tough hairstyle. (laughs) Bannon is, I found out, uh, 66 years old today, and and that guy looks... Just horrendous. He, he doesn't look like an age. He doesn't look like an age at all. Dude, but also, I mean, when you're ugly, and I can speak from experience, when you're ugly, it's really hard to, to like, pull off any kind of style because he has the same hair as Gavin Newsom. And, like, well, not now. His hair's long now. But I know what you're saying. He used to have the same hair as Gavin Newsom. And uh, the ladies who cut my hair down in Highland Park, every time Gavin Newsom gets on the news – they all start screaming in Spanish, and they all basically start fanning themselves. Yeah. And then the one of the lady cutting my hair will always be like, we are talking about how cute Gavin Newsom is. Yeah. You know, the governor. <laughs> he is so cute. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I got it. I figured it out. You guys were all like, hi, you. Yeah, <laughs> right yeah, when yeah. he comes on the news. I was Brian, like, <laughs> you were like, oh, my God, these women hate Gavin Newsom. <laughs> yeah, I know. Bunch of Trump supporters, I assume. <laughs> um, yeah, Bannon had no choice but to be a villain. He's got rosacea. He's got that horrible pale Irish skin. He's got that Michael Douglas haircut. And Michael Douglas, another guy, just because he's handsome, same hair yeah. as Steve Bannon. But Steve Bannon looks like a fucking the devil with that hair. Well, thanks for explaining to me what life is like for ugly people. For me and me, I'm and sure you wouldn't understand. The, a lot of the listeners probably don't really understand a lot of the things you're talking about right now. But this is really starting to make a lot of sense. <laughs> so uh, this Battle guy, he would meet girls off Sugar Daddy websites. And he would fly him in and pr- say he was a photographer. And he'd be like, you can stay in my mansion, use my nice car, here, get $1,000 a day. He wouldn't deliver any of that. Got accused of some stuff. He had a maid who accused him of some stuff. He told her that part of her job was to suck his dick. Mm. And uh, turns out that's illegal. You can't say that to a woman. You, you also can't do that to yeah. a woman. <laughs> um, oh, 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 I see. I see. <laughs> I see. Okay, gotcha. He got, uh, he got arrested. For those of you listening, Brian just winked. <laughs> Okay. He, uh, he got drove for a pump and dump ski, which apparently a pump and dump is that same thing I was talking about where you uh, manipulate the worth of your stock falsely and get people to invest. Yeah. And then you sell and pull up the stakes and go to another town. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try it. We should try that with the worst hour. He wore a wire and busted those people. too. <laughs> How sad. <laughs> this guy, seriously, is, he's been indicted under the RICO Act twice. Well, that one I can understand. <laughs> 
Uh, look, we can. The Rico will get all of us at some point, to my understanding. <laughs> I really hope Worst Hour gets indicted under the Rico Act. If they can't figure out what to do with you, they'll they'll Rico Act you. If you are indicted under the Rico Act, the first thing you have to do is you have to get a nine thousand dollars suit to wear to court. Yeah. You can't show up in a polo shirt if you're indicted on the Rico. No, 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 absolutely not. By the way, did you watch the footage of Bannon getting out of jail? When I he got did. Bailed and he yeah. ripped that mask off so demonstratively, <laughs> like, like, like a, almost like a Corona is a hoax. Hoax. Yeah. He looked like when uh, you know when uh, Top Gun <laughs> rips off his mask when he lands and he starts breathing super heavy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when Matt, when whatever, whatever that guy died. He bailed out. He bailed himself out of prison for f- or five million dollars. Yeah. And he raised that five million dollars through another organization, <laughs> where he was going to, where he promised that he was going to go over to China and, and kill Xi Jinping. <laughs> I'm sure you know this, though. You know, when your ba- when the bail is five billion dollars, he's paying five hundred thousand. Yeah, of course. I, you know, I never knew that before. I don't understand the bail system, and I pray that I never have to understand it. So the bail system is a credit with the court. So you get it paid back if you paid it and you show up to your court date. Uh huh. And so a bail company fronts ninety percent. You pay ten percent out of pocket. And then they get they get. Um, What's the bail company get out of this whole this whole ordeal? Like if you you pay five hundred thou, the bail company pays the rest. Do they get interest on what they pay? No, they or? get a hundred percent return from the court system on uh-huh. the bail, and they get to keep that ten percent or whatever. I see. So, okay. so it, they're making like five hundred grand. Okay. Yeah. On a five million dollar. Yeah, I've been. I've never look. I've had summons of uh, you know, but it ain't. You've never dealt with bail, dude. I I have had to be bailed out a few times, and uh, that one shirt, um, Big Dog Bail Bonds in Athens, Georgia. Yeah. If you wear their shirt when you're getting arrested, you get bail. Your bail's covered. Yeah. So um, I used to wear that under my shirts at all times, all, all the time. I wear Big the Dog wor- Bail Bonds. Shirt. The wor- <laughs> like the worst Superman ever. <laughs> <laughs> the oh most- yeah <laughs> Takes off the shirt I'm not Superman I'm super disappointing son <laughs> Big dog bail bonds Shout out Athens, Georgia Pulaski Street We'll see if they'll uh, We'll see if they'll <laughs> We'll try to bring them on As a sponsor to the show The last guy I want to get into um, So this guy uh, LB Moon mm-hmm. Was not arrested As a part of the We Build the Walls camp Yeah But he's been um, In a bu- He's run a ton of companies Been on a lot of boards with Andrew Badalato and Steve Bannon, and he's just got some funny, funny stories about him. And they, he's he's also in the inner circle. LB Moon used to play for the Miami Dolphins. He's uh, his name is Cowboy. That's what you call him. Yeah. And uh, he's a disbarred attorney from Oklahoma. Now, now we're sitting. Now you're talking my language. Recently arrested uh, for uh, driving intoxicated the wrong way in a Whataburger drive-through. Pretty do, rough. You know what Whataburger is, Tyler. I, does. I do too. I went to a Whataburger one time in Texas, and I, I, uh, I asked them. I was like, "Can I get the, uh, can I get the burger with no bun?" And the <laughs> person who was working was like, "Hang on a second. <laughs> and she went back, and she brought somebody else out who was wearing a polo shirt. <laughs> <laughs> a manager. And the person was like, "What are you looking for?" <laughs> and I was like, "I would like a burger with no bun." And then they were like, okay, hang on a second. And I'm not kidding. Another person came out who was wearing a collared shirt with a tie. He was wearing a tuxedo. We were on track to getting a guy with a monocle. (laughs) The Monopoly guy came down, had a British accent. At some point, Vincente Fox, president of (laughs) Mexico, billionaire president of Mexico came came out. El Chapo. At the end, Mark Cuban walked out and was like, what are you looking for exactly? They were literally in shock and in awe. They were like, burger without the, okay. And what they gave me at the end was just a patty, <laughs> just strewn about. Right, they threw it in your car like a Frisbee. They put it in a, <laughs> they put it on a platter where they put the patty, and then they put the cheese next to the patty so it didn't melt or anything. They were like, we got to assume this guy must hate everything good and everything fun. <laughs> I've had a, um, I had a, I was vegan at a Whataburger, but I, I had, we all had our strategy. This is in Pensacola, Florida. Yeah. We all had our strategy. You get a hash brown burger. They make a hash brown burger. Okay. And so you just walk in and you go, can I have a hash brown burger with no cheese? And they're like, hell yeah. Sure. And you walk out and it's vegan, but that's all carbs. To them, they can understand. That makes sense. It just sounds like a drunk. They're like, that's, yeah, dude, You're you dr- must have been fucking hammered, dude. <laughs> yeah, get this guy. Give him a double hash brown because my boy's wasted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the butt they makes- the wasted bell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We got a cool guy up front. <laughs> Instead of getting out with a nicer, the guy takes his shirt off. <laughs> so it's way, whipping it around. Yeah. Yosemite Sam comes out shooting guns into the ceiling. 
dude. Whataburger does rule, though. It was really good. Dude, when I was a kid in Georgia, there was a... Uh, uh, no, it couldn't have been in Georgia because we don't have Whataburgers there. I must have been in Florida. Yeah, I was in Florida. And I saw a commercial, and it's the funniest commercial. They had some Sam Elliott type guy doing their commercials for him, and it was this close up of a hamburger. And, it, and without saying anything, it doesn't say water burger or anything. The the line, the opening line of the commercial was, first we start with the juiciest ground chuck beef. Yeah. Then we add a crispy Roma tomato on top, and the freshest romaine lettuce. Top it off with a sesame. I thought the guy sounded like he was just beating off. Yeah, dude, I, the entire time. Was- I felt so uncomfortable when <laughs> when Brian was doing that. I wanted to kill myself. It was, yeah, I remember watching the commercial. I, it was felt like I was watching porn with my family. Yeah, that was you know really I mean? that was really uncomfortable. <laughs> that guy's now dead, by the way. Who did that voiceover? So LB Moon gets arrested for driving the wrong way on a uh, on a drive through at a Whataburger. Cowboy, excuse me. Yeah. Um, and so when he gets, when they detain him, he pulls out a fake badge that then tries to say he's a sheriff deputy. Yeah. Which is good movie. You don't want to go straight to sheriff. You want to go you, deputy. You want to downplay it a little bit yeah. for believability. Yeah. Like, I'm not a sheriff, but I am a sheriff's deputy. So <laughs> let me just get my boss on the horn and we can clear this out. <laughs> clear this up. And they're like, they like looked at it, it looked like a dollar store badge or something. And they, they arrested him. He spit on the cop. Yeah. He has a tendency to impersonate officers. He's not an officer. He got arrested another time. Um, I forget what it was for. I had to, I, I can't remember what it was for. But he, uh, as he was getting arrested, he pulled out an ATF badge. Yeah. He just has like he's like Saul Goodman. He's just got like badges in his back. He's like, no, actually, guys, I'm an ATF agent. We're uh, all good. We're all good. Uh, ass what? titty fuck <laughs> agent. <laughs> I was totally thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say ass to foot. <laughs> Um, he had a rival attorney that he threatened to stick a pen in his neck and run his body through a shredder. Yeah. Well, we all said that to an attorney. <laughs> We've all said that to an attorney here and there. Uh, anyway, yeah. So LB Moon and another guy in the inner circle, and, and uh, that's that's who Steve Bannon is spending his time with. That's his world. So like when people, that's why like when he got into office as Trump's advisor, and everybody's like, "There's this ideologue." They're like, "Trump's a con artist," but this man's an ideologue. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. That's his con. Yeah, he's not an ideologue. He has no beliefs at all. Absolutely none. He just, just found a quick way to make a buck. Exactly. He fired out. He he figured out the internet. Yeah. That's one thing about these guys. He's sixty six years old. Trump's like seventy eight years old. They're both masters of the internet. Yeah. I'm terrible at it. Well, you know what they did? It's not even that they're masters of the internet. It's that they figured out how to resonate with the people that they want to resonate with online. So I mean, that is a skill. Though. It's a it's a skill. You're absolutely right. But meaning like. I don't know if I would say Trump is a master at the internet for tweeting uh, at 3 a.m. in the morning, all caps, whatever. I, I mean, maybe he is. I guess you're right. Whatever he's skill. doing, it worked. But it's just so funny that they're like, this guy's an actual white nationalist. Trump doesn't believe anything. But this guy, and it's like, no, no, no. This guy also doesn't believe anything. Yeah. There are no beliefs in that whole inner circle. And they, all they do is make money about, I mean, make money off of making like propaganda about how there's a moral decay in this country. And they're all... All just skis con artists. And one of them I have a personal relationship to, uh, and I've actually benefited from family of one of these guys. Uh, I've, I've, I knew some, somebody I know knew some high rollers uh-huh. uh, down at the uh, Hard Rock Casino. Yeah, down in Southern Florida, and th- you know we know it happened in Florida. Whatever you're saying, <laughs> we know it happened in Florida. So through a relationship with one of these guys we talked about, I won't say who, I ended up with box seats at a Miami Dolphins game with a private party bus that took us from the casino. So we gambled in the casino. We got a private party bus. Yeah, and we uh, went to box le- seats for a Miami Dolphins Green Bay Packers game. And on the way there, they were partying super hard. One guy was uh, almost dead. He was a big fat guy who was just beat red, just beat red. They're like, oh, he went extra hard last night and he didn't say a word. Remember the guy in Wayne's World where they're like, if you're going to spew, spew in this. And they yeah. the, that was, this guy was like a dead body on there. And they're all just like, do you remember in Seinfeld where they're like, this son of a bitch knows what I'm talking about, don't you, you bastard? That's like never seen Seinfeld oh, before. Right, right. Well, that's how they all talk. They're Is like, there a King of Queens episode that you can reference? <laughs> no, but they look like him. Um, Gary Unmarried? Uh, no, but I'm sure that these are shows that these guys like. Yes, dear. <laughs> no idea. 
All right. You're getting into shows I've never even heard of. Wow, they're great shows. <laughs> um, you know what I was thinking about the other day? How I've seen more progressive commercials than I have Two and a Half Men episodes. <laughs> like, think about how much content you've absorbed from progressive in the last 10 years. And, oh, yeah. And pick a sitcom that's made $300 million, and you've seen way more progressive commercials than you have the, the, that sitcom. I love how people are always like, yeah, Flo does improv comedy at uh, Groundlings every yeah. Wednesday. And it's like, who gives a shit? Yeah, Flo owns half of Topanga Canyon. <laughs> yeah, Flo is... Flo is an oligarch. Yeah, but Flo is what <laughs> Flo is what her bank account uh, refers to her paychecks as. Yeah, heavy flow. Yeah, heavy flow. She. Uh, so these guys, they're te- they're all telling their t- fucking war stories about partying. All these guys, and these are all people. You know, I'm talking about a guy related to Bannon over here. One guy goes, "Yeah, we're playing poker with some Indian doctor, and we figure it's shit. He ain't never been to Florida. He ain't never seen an alligator before." So I said, out, so we go get an alligator. I don't know what that means at all. Yeah. He goes, so we duct tape the son of a bitch so he can't bite. You know, duct tape his mouth shut. And so we take the private jet up to go play poker with this guy in Savannah. And we bring a gator on the fucking airplane, right? <laughs> and he's like, he ain't never seen no alligator. So we're playing poker. We wait till the guy goes to the bathroom. He goes to the bathroom. We go, go get the alligator. <laughs> <laughs> That's so they, just funny. They bring the alligator and they go, that guy shit his goddamn pants. And uh, he go, you ain't never seen no alligator. And I go, there's a ton of alligators and crocodiles in India. Yeah. Just so you know. And they're hungrier, like, probably. <laughs> and they're all just like, what? And I was like, this is what I, I can't hang with these guys. Yeah. Like more pissed off crocodiles, I imagine, yeah. in India. <laughs> like they're just, you know, it's a much harsher condition. They're more fanatical. They're religious. <laughs> I, you know, I imagine. Although, I don't know. Indians aren't too fanatical. What well, depends on where you're at. No, the alligators. Oh, the alligators. Gotcha. Gotcha. Because <laughs> yeah. you're saying the alligators, they, they float around. They yeah, take yeah, out yeah. The They've floor. gone up the Nile. They, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. We have no idea. Geography. The Nile is so <laughs> far from India. No, they get there. They get there. Gotcha. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I know the Nile's not in India. Sure. Jesus. But it's close. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I, I just bombed super hard by being doing a. Well, actually, there are alligators. It just totally killed the story. Yeah, man. And the guy's like, "So what do you we do?" We hated it. Oh yeah, yeah. Me and the listeners. <laughs> you and the boys. Oh, dude, we hated it. They go, "What do you do, man?" And I was like, oh, "I just got back from a European tour with my band." So that was years ago. Yeah. And they go, you, what do you play? I was like, guitar. And he goes, you must get more ass than a toilet seat. <laughs> and they all party. And, and then on the, they get so fucked up. They don't watch the game. And on the party, on the drive back on the party bus, they're all like nodding out like they're on opiates. They're yeah. All, and they're and all, they, were. they all have sleep apnea because they eat nothing but steak and beer. <laughs> These guys were just animals. But then a couple of years later, they hooked me up with field level seats. So I went from the box to watching the game on the field, different football stadium completely. Yeah. Um, and uh, they gave us two hundred fifty dollar credits uh, for for food and beverages. And I took it. I was like, I am going to finish two hundred fifty dollars worth of food and uh-huh. beer. And I got to. How hard was it? I got to one hundred and twenty five. And you started getting like sick. I didn't get sick, but I couldn't move. They had to, like, roll me out of there. Yeah. Oh, man. That reminds me of when I got back. I was uh, watching the Palestinian Thunder, which is the Palestinian soccer uh, team. I got box. Obviously. Yeah, I got box seat tickets. Well, but, I mean, the seats were made out of boxes. <laughs> you were sitting on a peach box. <laughs> they flipped it over. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I had crate level seats, man. They were amazing. It was incredible, man. Milk crate level. I had nose Primo. Bleed. I had nosebleeds, and by that I mean there was an <laughs> Israeli so much up, dust yeah. in the air. Well, there was an Israeli up there punching in the face <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was uh, it was fun, fun time, so dude. The Palestinian Thunder. They lost thirty percent of the field. <laughs> yeah. uh, in the game. Yeah, halfway through the field, <laughs> it started becoming another soccer pl- another soccer game. <laughs> Oh man! Anyway, I just uh, I'm, I'm I'm not saying I'm proud to be connected to these guys. Sure. All I'm saying is, when we talk about worst hour stuff and we talk about you know speculation, scamming, pumps and dumps, I just want you to know we're a little closer to this than you think. I think we're a lot closer to this you than know? people think. There's a little bit of authenticity that I'm not sure everybody was giving us credit for. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, listen, man. Uh, we're gonna find out. I think as more scandals uh, go through that. Uh, you're connected to uh, a ton of um, yeah. scandalous people, and we look I forward to that. I would love to be arrested on a yacht, a $28 million yacht for fraud. That is bucket list shit. You want to flee an embassy or flee to an embassy, whatever, yeah. however it works out, probably flee to. Yeah. Right? You want to seek asylum embassy. in the basement of an asylum? You want to flee to an assembly and from uh, a uh, political situation. Right, right. 
seeking political asylum is a you great. You want to seek political asylum. I want to get indicted for fraud on a yacht. Yeah. These are goals that can only be accomplished if you join the Patreon. www.patreon.com backslash W H O T W W hot W. Remember, folks, the worst hour of the week is 100% funded by listeners just like you. Join the Patreon today. $5 a month. You get a bonus episode a week, extra content. You get not, we've, we've talked about. Uh, asylum. We talked a little bit about this in the last episode of the Patreon, but you're going to have a, a wonderful opportunity. You're going to have ground floor investing opportunity here mm-hmm. to join a company. I mean, look, we have not done the uh, IPO yet, the initial podcast offering, but when we do, mm-hmm. um, you know, you're going to have first first bite at the apple. Yeah, we're going to have a soft opening. Soft opening for you just guys, the Patreons. Just the Patreons. And here's the thing. Don't be stupid. If you're stupid, here's what you're going to do. If you're stupid, you're gonna you're just not gonna join the Patreon today because you're gonna go. Oh, I'll get in and on next year. Next year, I'm telling you, once this thing is taken off, it's gonna be pretty hard to get in there. You're gonna be trying to get uh, mm-hmm. join our Patreon, and, and the entry level price is gonna be two thousand dollars a month. Easy, easy two thousand dollars a month. And you're gonna go. God, I wish, I wish I got in there when I when it was just five dollars. Mm-hmm. I wish I just got in there when it was five dollars. Not to mention the dividends we pay. It's just yeah, a little bit of seed money. Yeah, know? here I have an email here from our from our Patreon, uh, Jared. Uh huh. Patreon member Jared said, uh, "Thanks, guys. I really enjoyed the last dividend payment of five thousand uh, dollars. During this time uh, of such economic uncertainty, it's great to have uh, this additional income. Thank you, worst hour of the week, Jared. And and not only is that a, a true and real email yeah. that <laughs> Ramsey just pulled up, but Jared actually got screwed because other people get six, seven thousand. Some people are getting Jared six, seven thousand. Jared was a little thousand. late, He's, so hurry J- up. Jared was a little late. Hold on, let me see if right here. Oh, here we go. We have one from Tom here. Thanks, Worst Hour Nation. It's almost the same exact email. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> Thanks, Worst Hour Nation. Um, I joined the Patreon uh, one year ago before it was before it was even uh, initiated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this yeah. guy joined. Well, we 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 seeded the podcast before we started it. Yeah, we raised we a, invest, we we raised invest, a lot of money. A lot of PowerPoint presentations yeah. in Ramada in conference yeah. rooms. A lot of laser pointing. Yeah. Long story short is, what is this guy's name? Mark? Mark says he's making $7,000 a month now, thanks to our Patreon. On top of Tom? On top well? of Tom. Yeah. So, I mean, look, the it's there. And what do you do with that money? You buy Bitcoin. No, you put it back in to the podcast. Well, if you want. Well, uh, I, oh, you're saying if you want to be a millionaire. I'm saying <laughs> if you just want to be a thousandaire, get Bitcoin. Some people aren't ready to be millionaires. But if you are ready to be a millionaire, join the Patreon today. www.patreon.com slash WHOTW. Please enjoy this bonus one-minute clip from our most recent episode. Yeah, I mean, they have Russia's Got Talent, and there is a lot of bears It's a lot of bears. Stage. It's a lot of like, I am going to juggle <laughs> chins. I'm going to juggle log. I will let wolf swallow me, and I will cut my way out of wolf. <laughs> I am going to, My talent is intimidation. <laughs> I'm going to intimidate the entire studio audience. <laughs> I am an amazing armed robber. Uh, yeah. Everybody put your hands up. <laughs> Four X's and somebody just ex- just kills you executioner style from right behind. <laughs> <laughs> the best execution. <laughs> the studio audience is all prisoners. It's a, it, They're all people who are literally chained to the studio audience. They're using prison labor. <laughs> That's how you get voted off. They have a guy. They put you on your knees, and a guy comes out with a gun to the back of your head, and then the, and then like the the laugh meter. Call three two three one one zero one one zero zero. Who should yeah. be executed? Is yeah. it Mikhail? Boo! <laughs> Is it Henry? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, this one's good. Oh, there we go. I was literally thinking this would be great to have a sound effect that worked for that. Today we are killing Mikael! For the second half of the show today, we're going to be looking into the poisoning of uh, uh, popular... Would you say he's a popular Russian descent? What is he? Uh, He's uh, very popular. He's a very popular Russian uh, descendant. Alexei Nelvani. Um, And he was poisoned, or he was suspected to be poisoned. I I personally... No, confirmed today. Confirmed today by An the hour ago by the German uh, hospital yeah. he's staying at. Yeah, Deutsche Welle was mm-hmm. the news. From my personal opinion, it does look like a severe allergy. <laughs> <laughs> I know the Russian doctors are saying that he probably was suffering from low blood sugar. Yeah, so they were like, "I'm with the Russian doctors on this one. I'm like, give him a Biscoff, see yeah. what happens. <laughs> you know, yeah, give him a can of Coke, see if it turns around. Uh, he did. I mean, he is a very popular uh, dissident. Uh, oh, he's a he's the most uh, vocal critic. Of Putin, yeah, and he was on the plane 
so he got poisoned on a plane. Uh, apparently, the only thing he had that day was a cup of tea. Yeah. So, uh, well, so then we don't know if he got poisoned. Exactly, because I mean, tea. I mean, really. I was drinking tea in the last episode. If, yeah. <laughs> Remember, I had like 19 bags of tea. You in did. There. Brian had 43 <laughs> bags of tea <laughs> and his hot cup of water. Um, but when I heard him moaning on the plane, there's, there's video of him poisoned on the plane. And oh, really? Yeah, and he's just like, oh! And I was like, that sounds like low blood sugar to me. <laughs> to me. Yeah, when I hear that, I go, that's... Every time my blood sugar dips, I I know that no matter where I'm at, I just moan. Russian doctors are like, bro, you're being a diva. They give him a, <laughs> they give him a Snickers bar. Yeah, just eat this and chill out. Just chill, dude. You're not yourself when you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's a little hangry. <laughs> he fucking did. He's so he. Uh, but he's been put through the rigor. Did you uh, did you see the picture of him dyed green? Yes, I did see him. But what is that? So apparently, it's some antiseptic. Product that they sell in Russia that <laughs> permanently stains skin <laughs> for yeah. some reason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like the idea that in Russia, some of the over-the-counter medication is anti is anti poison. <laughs> yeah, it's like World War One, like yeah, chemical yeah, yeah. warfare shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So somebody ran up to. So back in the day, he was you know he's been outspoken against Putin forever, and he was thinking about running for president against Putin, and he's shaking hands on the street, and somebody runs up and just throws this green liquid on him and it covers his hands and his face. He's, he looks like an Oompa Loompa. Uh-huh. Like he is like straight up green. And I'll post a picture of it in this episode. And uh, he lost 80% of vision out of oh, one of Jesus. his eyes. And and now he's been on a plane and he's poisoned and they said this is going to do permanent nerve damage. But Putin doesn't want to kill him. They don't want him dead because that's going to make him a martyr. Uh-huh. They just want to get up. They're like, let's just make him green. Yeah. And give him stomach issues. Then let's give him an assi- let's put him in a situation to where like when the next sort of group of Russians wants to do something, he's kind of in the corner and he's going, oh, I don't think so, guys. Let's just <laughs> let's just be cool. Yeah, I mean, look at me. I'm green. Like I'm green. I'm and, tired. <laughs> video- I'm still shitting. <laughs> the you know? videos are so funny too because he's like he thought that if he dyed me green, he could shut me up. But yeah. no, I'm gonna be louder. And so he's like taking a picture of him green. And then there's you realize that there's guys behind him who are also green who are got the splash. Yeah. So so they had like splattered patterns of green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> them. Jeez. What a gnarly country, dude. I'm so he was uh he, essentially the attack came because he said he was gonna run for office. He had been popular for a long time as somebody who was uh, He's a run, critic he of He had a Moscow mayoral campaign, yeah. uh which he lost. Uh-huh. Is that a suicide? Like in in Russia, is it a sign of depression if you want to if you want to run for president? <laughs> I mean, at this point, like it's like, you know, it's like the, it's like he's like a hang glider at this yeah. point. Like, what what's wrong? Be sure to call your doctor if you've taken an, an antidepressant in Russia. Uh, be sure to call your doctor if you've had any nausea, nausea, upset stomach, diarrhea, or thoughts of running for the president. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> seriously, you should be fifty one fifty. It's a suicide. It is a. It is a. That is a thought to harm yourself. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> they poison. I mean, I don't know if they poison people, but a lot of people who seem to. Speak out against Putin and the Kremlin, which, by the way, what is the Kremlin? I could have looked that up. Yeah, I think. What the fuck is the Kremlin? I think the, um, I think the Kremlin is a glove. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, the Kremlin is a hat that the that Putin wears. <laughs> it's it, like an old timey. It's a little bit bigger than a bowler cap. Yeah, but it's, it's smaller than a fedora. It's a Russian crown, I believe. It's a crown uh, that. Uh, no, I don't. Know. I think the Kremlin is like a, It's like it's like saying DC or something. I'm not sure, Tyler. <laughs> We're not going to have this privilege for too much longer. Can you tell us what the Kremlin is? Other than, uh, you know, other than a cool ass sounding word. I was going to say. It means a fortress inside a city. It, it a fortress inside a city. Yeah. See, if you're, if you're using words like Kremlin, I yeah. mean, you should know to shut up. Yeah. yeah. If, if your country has a Kremlin. Yeah. Maybe just keep your mouth shut. If keep, you don't want to end up green. Keep it. Keep the dissenting <laughs> to a minimum. Yeah. Internal. If you want to, you know, just go juggle and Russia's got talent. It's just a, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not an easy place to live, you know? No, not at all. Uh, and, uh, we're going to get into this right now. Uh, so this mysterious body issues that people have. Yeah. Uh, the dissidents have, I, I, we're not going to listen. We're neutral here. Mm-hmm. 
uh, we're not going to say that there's poisoning happening. We're not going to say it's not happening. Yeah. Because we have a large following in Russia and, you know, they play us on a lot of state controlled media. We are. Russia one. Yeah. Plays us all the time. We're currently in a bidding war uh, right now to get on to RTV. Uh, it's yeah. between us and another show at the moment. We won't say the other show. Yeah. Let's just say North Korea's got talent. Uh, <laughs> it's between us and North Korea's we're, got talent. We're fighting uh, Kim Jong Un's uh, sister's yeah. podcast. Right now, it is between us uh, getting on our TV and uh, Dennis Rodman is going to do they're gonna, yeah. the Dennis Rodman experience. Right. Uh, <laughs> experiment. Experiment. The Dennis Rodman experiment. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so. This this idea, this moaning, this after drinking tea, this is something that's happened to a lot of people who seem to. And part of me thinks that I think that when you have like a when you're as crazy as somebody who could run, a, who could oppose the Russian government. Yeah. A, a perfect government as far as I'm concerned. Sure. I think that is a sign of sickness. Yeah. yeah, yeah I think when you, when you start, you know. Uh, you know, it, it, to me, I th uh, that's strike number one. I mean, first of all, when you start getting nauseated in Russia, I imagine it's like, okay, well, just hang on a minute. This just might be Russia. <laughs> yeah, there is sour cream in, in everything. In everything. So, you yeah. know, then it then you get to a point where you start to realize that you are sick and, and you maybe got to take a chill pill on some of your ideas. <laughs> so this is, uh, we're going to get into real quick, uh, one, two, three, four, F a few other people who have, also come down with some sort of freaky sickness after speaking out against Vladimir Putin. Yeah. And like I said, we, we, we're not bringing this up to tie anything together. We are just saying it's We're a, just saying that these are some other things that have happened in, in Russian history. Yeah. Since the Putin administration. Some of the leading causes of death in Russia, smoking, drinking, dissent. <laughs> speaking up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, in 2018, Sergei Skripal. Uh-huh. Um, now I'm not claiming that I'm saying any of these. Things, I think right? I saw Sir Guy Scripple uh, in concert recently. He did. Yeah, the, yeah. He, he was did, opening for Skrillex. Yeah, he did the second weekend in Coachella. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. He closed it out I in don't the care, tent. I don't care what anybody says. Those jokes will never get old to me. Sir Jay Scripple's jokes. No, jokes where people are like, "Saw that guy to Coachella." Like, oh yeah, come on, man. It's it a was good time. Can't get old because it was never fresh. Oh, okay, to okay. Quote Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Sir Gay Scripple was a double agent, which I didn't know we still had those. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was an agent for Russia and an agent for the UK. For the Ukes, yeah. The, the Ukes. Ukes. Is that what you call them? That's what I call UK. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, you know what's funny is he was drinking some tea. or No, no, he wasn't drinking tea. Excuse me. This was done with a perfume bottle. Uh-huh. And he was found with his daughter, Yulia, which just call her Julia. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Yulia and Sergei were found on a bench, foaming at the mouth, nodding out. Yeah. And it caused a scene. Yeah. Can you imagine that in L.A., that causing a scene? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine if you if you found people foaming at the mouth on a bench? If you find a bench where people are not nodding out, yeah. foaming at the mouth, you're like, what the hell happened? I what mean, happened here? Where's he, the foaming people? Yeah, that causes a scene. People will stop. <laughs> if there's an empty bench at a park in, in Los Angeles, people will stop and like, be like, this place is a ghost town. What's going on over here? <laughs> yeah, why is nothing? Yeah, the fact well, that they called doctors for that is just, that would never happen in LA. But they were nodding. So apparently somebody sprayed him with a perfume bottle filled with a poison. And then a really unfortunate thing that would have happened to me in my 20s happened after this. A guy found the perfume in the trash, uh -huh. pulled it out, and tried to give it to a pretty lady. Okay, yeah. Like as a romantic gesture you know yeah, i just yeah. found this and you're a beautiful lady he sprayed her wrist and she died <laughs> <laughs> russia is just tough man i mean that was in london actually you know? yeah a amesbury or something when he's a double agent out of curiosity mm -hmm. that means that you're an agent for both britain and russia and uh you work for one more than the other one is that how it works a double agent means that you are betraying who you originally were an agent for so he so, so he was a russian agent Went out to Britain. And he became a double agent, which and means he was working for the UK. He was most likely compromised. He got into the UK. He most most likely was caught, and they decided to play him back against Russia. Exactly. That's how these things work, you know. It's not like he all of a sudden had a change of heart and realized he was a good person or something. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. He wore a wire, Andrew yeah. whatever style. Yeah. yeah. He wore another wire next to the <laughs> other wire. He had two wires. At a certain point. <laughs> Everywhere he goes, he just has to get another wire added. <laughs> He's wearing a giant puffy winter coat, yeah. so nobody can see all the wires. Um, there now another person now. Now, like I said, he was a double agent who betrayed the KGB. Yeah. So, whatever somebody, I mean, maybe it was perfume. Sure. Maybe it was just perfume. Maybe it was an allergic reaction. They didn't die though. 
Um, there's another guy. Though in, they were sent to New Zealand with new identities. Is mm-hmm. that correct? That's right. So now they're living in uh, New Zealand as Julia and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sergio. <laughs> <laughs> Also, the daughter just getting dragged into that. I love that, dude. I wish the United States would send me to a different country to just have a new identity and just <laughs> great carry on with your life. Yeah, do the witness protection program. Oh, it would be so amazing. New Zealand, too. That's like the place where – that's where all the billionaires say they're going to go when global warming goes down. Yeah. Apparently, there's something something about New Zealand. Everybody, That's everybody's exit plan. Yeah, I mean, look. There's, it's like how everybody in America is going to Austin. Yeah. <laughs> it's like New Zealand is like the billionaire's it's, Austin. It's the billionaire's Austin. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was also in 2012 Alexander Yurevich, uh-huh. uh, Para Uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this guy. He was a whistleblower. Yeah, there's a lot of terms that I'm liking on this episode. Yeah, pump and dump, whistleblower, whistleblower double agent. Yeah, you know, uh, stock manipulation. Whataburger. Whataburger. Yeah, this is this is uh, this is a real peak WHP episode. Yeah, man. Uh, he died jogging. Yeah, which is that, why I don't jog. That's a good, a good. You know, I don't believe in jogging. I think sprint or walk. Yeah, <laughs> at least run. Pick one or the other, buddy. <laughs> I don't like you. Run. You get hurt at half speed. <laughs> I remember I told preacher I went for a jog. He goes, "Bro, you still get fat jogging." Yeah, man, you got. He goes, "You sprint, you get ripped." Yeah. <laughs> he goes, "Sprint rips you. Jogging, you just stay fat jogging." Yeah, I like. <laughs> Preacher is some of, is the worst personal trainer ever because yeah. nothing rhymes, nothing's cool. Like, right, right, right. Sprint gets you ripped. Fat, jogging <laughs> makes you fat as shit. <laughs> uh, this so this whistleblower, he was like, he indicted he, he his whistleblowing indicted like Putin and uh, Russian elites and two hundred fifty million dollars worth of scams. Uh, <clears throat> he died jogging, and uh, what they found in his body was um, gelsimium, which is a Chinese plant. Yeah, that uh, they nicknamed heartbreak grass uh-huh. because the leaves give you a heart attack. Okay, why is there plants like that? It doesn't seem. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. It seems to counteract all of the things I've heard about plants. Yeah, like how do you procreate? I don't know, man. If you're killing everything that spreads your seed. People are like, don't eat meat. It'll give you a heart attack. Try this plant-based diet. It's like, well, it depends on the plant. Yeah, what if I eat heartbreak glass? That could be that could be it for me. Take that, be, vegans. Yeah, it'd be better to just eat nothing but just steak, like fat from a cow, than to just right. have heartbreak glass. At least it takes a little longer. Grass, heartbreak, heartbreak. Heartbreak glass. Grass, heartbreak, grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that grass just grow on the ground or something, or like uh, this is what I'm confused about? In Russia, are they carrying around this grass in their pockets, <laughs> or is this like a, just a coincidence that this grass is growing somewhere? Right. Also, what was he? Did they slip it into a salad? Yeah. Like how did how do you sneak? I have a feeling they just put his face into the floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guess. <laughs> they, they just shoved his face into the palm of his hand and yeah. said, "Eat this." Yeah, I think that that's it. <laughs> um, there's another guy, another former KGB agent turned critic of Putin in the Kremlin, named Alexander Litvinenko. Uh huh. And uh, he had some tea that was poisoned with a chemical that has already come up on the show. Uh huh. Our boy Yasser Arafat, same problem. Yeah. Polonium. Polonium. He had polonium in his tea. Another tea. He can't be drinking. Alexei Navani yeah. was in his tea. Alexander Litvinenko. Yeah. Um, We're uh, called. That's why the worst side of the week does energy drinks. Yeah. No one's ever been poisoned by an energy drink. <laughs> not that Certainly not short term. <laughs> 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 I mean, it does cause heart attacks and cancer, but down the road. I imagine in 50 years, my pancreas is not going to be doing too well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this guy had polonium in his tea, uh, and uh, yeah, he turned on the KGB. He wrote an apology as he was dying yeah. to Putin, which is like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, I don't think he wrote Polonium's- the apology. I don't think he wrote the apology. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're, uh, I'm, I think I'm you're an mis- idiot. I think you're misunderstanding what happened. It was much like uh, what's her name's uh, <laughs> yeah Svetlana's I- apology uh, concession speech after the Belarusian. Election. Yeah, exactly. I-, I don't think those guys who are getting their heads cut off on and uh, <laughs> you know terrorist videos are. Denouncing the U.S. <laughs> yeah, he was like, "I'm sorry, I am weak man. Uh, I betrayed motherland. Um, I am homosexual." <laughs> I, I used uh, to watch those videos where the terrorists would would make the guy say a bunch of stuff, and I'd be like, "That's crazy that they got him to change his opinion on America so hard." <laughs> Save him. He's saved. Yeah, he's mm. got your opinion now. No, 
Now there's another journalist. This is the last one we'll get into for this one. Um, Anna Politkovskaya. I don't know. She was a journalist. Yeah. Um, and she covered the Chechen. She was a che- journo. She was a journo who covered the Chechen. Do you remember when uh, a bunch of school children teachers got sick in the late nineties? I don't remember this. This was before my. Again, I, this was before I was starting to pay attention to that part of the world. So Russia may or may not, the Putin may or may not have poisoned a Chechen school uh-huh. and the teachers because everybody in the school got sick for six months, completely yeah. incapacitated. Who knows? Might have been just been a bad day with the water. Could be. Maybe something happened. But uh, so she was a journalist who covered that, covered a lot of their the Chechen war and what they were doing, the human rights abuses. Yeah. She um, had some t- bad tea, some polonium in her tea, which uh, now in Russia they're poisoning people who are reporting on poisonings. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> well, it seems to be uh, – look, if you're a journalist in Russia, you are actually doing something insane. Right. So uh, you kind of need to be poisoned. <laughs> and then the last guy they poisoned – I forgot to bring this up. The guy who there, – there's a guy involved with Pussy Riot. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I did see that person's name. And but I when I saw him and he was like this, like, you know, pussy riot guy, you know, he seemed to hit like a male feminist vibe where I was like, he probably legit did have an aller- allergic reaction or something. Like, he, he probably had, they like, they probably poisoned him with gluten or something. Like, he had a peanut butter sandwich. He, he survived. He was fine. I don't know anything about this guy. He's So he's involved with the, the pussy riot as a movement in Russia. So pussy riot was a riot girl band. It started and Riot Girl is like a genre of punk that started by Bikini Kill. It's like a feminist all girl punk band. It's usually all girl. Bikini Kill was even all girl, but um, and so be- they started doing a bunch of like pro LGBT, pro feminist protests in yeah. Russia, which is the real deal. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And they all got arrested, sentenced to jail. And this guy was, to me, it seemed like he was like. Uh, a hanger on a little bit, but he uh, during the World Cup, uh, he ran onto the field of a World Cup match with Russia uh, with the members of Pussy Riot. This is my problem to me. I'm just like, this guy's just trying to get laid. Yeah. You know, it's like that's the vibe I got from him the whole time because he was like they were interviewing him about his poisoning and he had a book, a Charlie Chaplin book on his table. And I was like. I don't know, but I, I just like a, a guy in Russia that skinny running around with Pussy Riot, Charlie Chaplin book. To me, he stri- stri- strikes me as a DSA style guy. Sure, sure. You know sure, what I mean? Sure. Where I'm like, the Pussy Riot people, they're putting their asses on the line. This guy, I think he, I think he was poisoned with gluten. I really do. I, mean, I, I, I like started taking Putin's side. I was like, this guy's just kind of annoying. Yeah, I mean, listen, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is statistically one of you didn't get poisoned. May, you know what I mean? You right. can't get all of you. So there's a chance one of you wasn't poisoned. And if we're going to take our bets, you're saying it's that guy. Yeah. And also, he's not even like a member of Pussy Riot. He's like, it would be like if you wanted to attack, uh, what's that? Chuck D's group, Public Enemy. Yeah. And you just, you poison one of the guys in the back who stands with his fist in the air. Yeah. And it's and, like, why would you chuck poison flavor, flavor, Chuck D? Like, yeah. I seriously think this guy, like he was, I think he took a bite of a sandwich was like, oh my God, is it? And then his stomach killed wow. over. This poor guy. <laughs> this poor guy. Well, it's just, his resume is so insignificant uh-huh. compared to all these other people. Well, listen, man, I, uh, you know, if that's the case, uh, that is the case. I, uh, you know, as you know, on this podcast, I'm a big supporter of uh, of Russian women rights. So, sure, sure, we all are. So, <laughs> and only Russian women. <laughs> but why would that guy and not the uh, the actual pussy right people get poisoned? You know, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe it was. Maybe uh, it's like that level of sexism where he's like, Putin saw them running around. And he goes, "Oh, he must be the one in control." Or maybe even. <laughs> Or maybe even just like in general, Putin was like, spin the story to make it to make it seem like we got somebody powerful. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like if it's they a, poison the wrong guy. <laughs> it's like if Trump like if Trump, you know, for some reason is behind, sees, oversees the execution of some guy who was like near Antifa at some point, he'll be like, we killed the leader of Antifa. You know what I mean? Like there's some. Sure, sure. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. He- Maybe he would like he saw a tea at a coffee and he poisoned the tea because he's like, oh, that must be for the girl. 
Yeah. And then he grabbed the tea and she grabbed the good coffee and poisoned he goes, him. We'll, we, we'll deal with the coffee for him. And he turned around with the coffee and the guy was dead. He's like, what the? What the? Wait, the, oh, the man was drinking tea? <laughs> what kind of tea is it, too? I want to know. You know what I mean? It better be black tea. I better not. It better oh. not be hibiscus or anything like that. Uh, no, no, no. Passion flower. Gray. Uh, chamomile. Earl I need gray. it to be gray or black. I need it to be a color. A breakfast blend is fine. Mm -mm. I need it to be something that you are drinking strictly. Like, you know, when you go for coffee and you realize there's no coffee and you're like, well, I guess I can, this'll do, you know? Right. So do you think Russia is poisoning these people or do you think that it's just a big coincidence? I'm on right. I, as of right now, I'm, I see no reason that it's not an allergic reaction. And, uh, until, I mean, really, you know, uh, until I see other evidence, I'm, I'm going to kind of stay with that. Um, you know, and that yeah, is, it's not a lot of people. I mean, there's millions of Russians. There's millions of Russians. And only like six, seven, eight, plus a whole school are getting sick. I mean, you know, it's not a lot. It's a, people get sick. People get sick. And that's <laughs> the thing people don't realize. I mean, look at coronavirus. Yeah. Oh, you think the Russians are doing all coronavirus? They have a vaccine. They do. They're the first ones to come up with a vaccine. So obviously these guys are, are not. They're anti-sick. <laughs> That's what they are. They're anti-sickness. I, I haven't seen anybody else come up with a vaccine. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So uh, you know, well, hey man, um, before we get out of here today, it is getting a little bit warm. Um, we should um, a bit of farewell to uh, you know one Tyler, the content creator. Tyler has left us for greener pastures, much greener pastures. Um, we went through a bidding war. There was a contract up for grabs, and uh, you know. Tyler is going to move on and to somebody's going to pay him a little bit more. Tyler will be producing the Guys We Fucked podcast. Yes, he will. <laughs> and uh, he'll be making a lot of money doing that. We well, tried. We, we offered tried. him benefits. The benefit was he doesn't have to talk to those women. And you know what? That's what he wanted. That's what he wanted. He so. wanted to go with who are they again? Uh, I don't know. They're, yeah. you know, but either way. <laughs> Uh, we uh, sincerely appreciate the efforts that he's put forth to make this podcast and, and grow this podcast. And uh, we wish him the best of luck as he moves forward with his life. Let's be real. He got a writing job at Breitbart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's doing sports for Breitbart. Yeah. He's do uh, Bright Breitbart. He just writes about Kaepernick all yeah. day. <laughs> he, he's on the uh, spinoff website, Breitbart Stool Sports. Uh, Bright, Breitbart Stool. <laughs> and he's doing sports and for far right wing commentators. Yeah, the only the only issues that matter to him are like high school trans athletes and Colin Kaepernick. Those that's are the only the, things Breitbart, the only Breitbart Sports will write about. Breitbart still sports. Breitbart still sports. <laughs> <laughs> Those dudes are such nerds. There's oh, not one the, athletic person at Breitbart. They're the absolute worst. They dude. wouldn't be like that. No, 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 not at all. You not could at just all. throw a ball. You chill way out. Do you remember when Andrew Breitbart? <laughs> Do you remember when Andrew Bypart died from heart attack a few years ago? Was he drinking tea? No, no, no. Uh, good question. I mean, the Clintons. Obama was in office at the time, so. The Clintons are our Putins. So maybe. Could be. We'll yeah. see. We'll look into it. Do you think there's a chance that one of the Clinton guys actually was sad and killed himself? Do you think that, like. It could be. <laughs> people get sad. I don't like to. Dude, if, it, if we're. When it comes to trashing people on air, Clintons and Putins, no thank you. <laughs> I'm keeping it strictly to people. I'm keeping it strictly to people who I know don't got that power, don't got that juice. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, well, he will be missed. Um, farewell to Tyler, the content creator. We, of course, have another farewell to, to uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to go ahead and, and take Co the lead on the Cobra, song. my main man, has uh, moved on to a lovely lady named Stacy. Yeah. Uh, he left the house. Um, Luckily, I haven't had the, you know, I feel like I feel like my my uh, like I lost a family member where I'm not ready to wash the pillowcases. Yeah. Yeah. Keep his scent around a day longer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he left me with a sincere goodbye fart. <laughs> 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 he, uh, yeah. Brian bottled it up. Yeah. Put it inside. Uh, and, uh, and Brian's going to open it next time he runs into a dissenter. Yeah. He, a, a worst ever dissenter. <laughs> he, he, uh, we went outside. He's like, what the hell's going on? When I was going to bring him out. And he goes, oh, a chick. And he just jumped in her car. Yeah. And uh, he's just gone. He was just gone. He was like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. Did the chick come and uh, meet him first? Or was there some, was there some like. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. She, she knew Cobra. Yeah. She's a, a white lady, which is relevant to the next sentence. Uh, she's changing his name to Asher. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, Asher's a Jewish name. So she must be a Jewish Are lady. you sure? I think Asher's a Jewish name, dude. Because uh, I, I had a ton of kids in my preschool named Asher, and I thought it was just like a hippie San Francisco. We'll look into name. it later, but I think it's a Jewish name. Well, she changed his name to Asher because uh, Cobra's too aggressive. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> But so uh, I get next time we see Cobra, I'd be like, yeah, it's Asher now. <laughs> <laughs> he's for sure now a USC frat guy. <laughs> yeah, he's like, L- listen, I don't, you know, I don't hump anymore. Oh, no, absolutely not. Not without asking permission. I don't, I don't permission. fart anymore. I take I probiotics. I got it under wrap. Yeah. I'm on two milligrams of dog Prozac a day. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not aggressive anymore. Do a lot of outreach at that, kennels. That part of my brain has been removed. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, we will miss Cobra. There will be another foster down the road, and uh, yeah, we'll look forward to it. Um, so please send in your uh, goodbyes to uh, the to universe. Is the worst hour universe is getting large. It's getting large, and it's getting in charge. Um, do us a favor. Send us your questions or comments at worst hour. Uh, worst hour of the week at gmail.com. Uh, be sure to follow the show at worst hour pod across all social media platforms. Follow Brian at. On Twitter at Brian J. Vokey and on Instagram at Mr. Brian Vokey. You can follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Ramsbad. Follow Tyler, the content creator, at Tyler Gazar, guitar with a Z. Um, uh, join our Patreon, patreon.com slash WHW. Seriously, we really, really, really need it. Uh, we appreciate you guys. We have a huge goal here. We're trying to hit, we're getting pretty fucking close to 100 and we want to hit 100. It's important. Once we hit 100, we can start to unlock some new things around here. Uh, I'll the- podcast with my shirt off. The show is getting the show is getting big. We're we've upgraded our studios. By the way, we have not mentioned it in the in this podcast. We are broadcasting from WH two studios, number two studio. Yeah, we left we left the West Side WH one over in Culver City. Yeah, we're now at WHP in Alhambra. Alhambra. Uh, we found that the real estate was a better bang for our buck. Yep. I got a sweet deal on a house. It's the house that Phil Spector shot that woman in. <laughs> yeah. In Alhambra. I got a great deal on it. Was that in Alhambra? Yeah. I had no idea. It's been, it's been is he in jail mo- still? Yeah. Trump didn't pardon him. <laughs> Trump did not pardon him. <laughs> That'd be so funny. That's gonna be his final his final co- commutation. <laughs> Phil Spector. Uh, let's see. Uh, be sure. Hey man, seriously though, join join our Patreon if you can afford it. I know right now is a tough time, but we've got tears for everybody. One ninety nine, five dollars. Um, and if you got more to offer, please help us out. I mean, we are trying to build a show. Um, and uh, yeah, we I, promise all the money will go to the show. We will not take. Any of the money, personally. We will not take one nickel of it. So please donate to We Build a Show. <laughs> we Build the Show. <laughs> Patreon.com slash We Build the Show. I just realized they are basically running a podcast, aren't they? <laughs> they really are. Um, hey, man, if you got nothing else to say, I got nope. nothing else to say. On behalf of me, Brian, Tyler, Cobra, and everybody else of the worst ever nation, peace be on to the prophet. Long live Tyler. Coming in hot with the depravity. Thank you for listening to the Worst Hour of the Week with Brian Vokey and Ramsey Badawi. Peace be unto the prophet.